Hello and welcome to this second video on writing. This one is going to be about the main part. So what is the main part actually made up of? I remember we said there were two sections, but I, I just can't remember what they were. We did indeed, and I think the two sections that we identified were theory and analysis. Ah, yes. And we always start with theory in the traditional German-style term paper, but also in quite a bit of the academic articles you run across. Theory chapters usually begin in a couple different ways, though, right? That's right. It all depends on what theories you're using and how you are using them. For example, it might be useful to start with a brief history of the intellectual lineage of your theory. That doesn't mean that we want you to give us a complete history of the theory in, in question. Like We don't want you to start with the early suffragettes if you want to write about feminist theory. What we want you to do is to identify which school of feminist thought, for example, you're following. This can actually lead to major problems if you don't do it. Because you might confuse somebody by writing about trauma theory, but following one of the major two breaks in that field, just as an example. So this is how you can start your theory chapter, just giving a bit of a background, where you're coming from, where your theory is coming from, and then you should probably move on to explaining what your theory actually is. Yeah, usually you want to create a very concise and, well, not, not exactly low stakes, but a clear definition of what the theory is that you're using or what concepts that you're using, how they're defined, this is extremely important, especially when you're dealing with certain concepts like hybridity or if you're dealing with a concept like affect. These concepts just have so many different definitions. You really need to hammer home what your theory is about. And what your theory is about has to do with how it relates to the term paper, and that should also be in your theory chapter. You want to explain which aspects of the theory will be important, and those should be the ones that you would explain in the most detail, and you will want to explain how the theory will interact with your primary literature. You could say that this is a sort of foreshadowing of what's going on in your analysis. You don't want to give away what you're going to write in the analysis chapter, but you may already hint at how the theory may be used with the primary text. When you employ specific concepts or figures, you're going to spend a bit of time defining those concepts and also defining some of the criticism or contention around them. By bringing in these different ideas, you can sometimes create some of those foreshadowing disagreements that might really matter when it comes to your analysis. If, let's say, there's some kind of debate about whether hybrid figures can maintain the status quo in detective fiction, uh, that certainly seems like the kind of thing that you might bring up in your theory chapter to foreshadow a kind of debate in your analysis chapter. If you're using two different theories, then things become a little bit more complicated. Most likely you'll explain one theory and then the other, but then you'll also want to say how and why you're using these theories, how they interact with each other, where you agree and where you disagree. Maybe you're using some aspects of one theory and a different set of aspects from the second theory, and you'll just need to explain how those two theories that you might be using will interact. The more theories and concepts you use, the longer your paper needs to be. So we would recommend not using more than two theories, not using more than, I don't know, say four concepts, unless you talk about it a bit earlier with your lectures and get the approval and, I guess, support that you need, uh, knowing that you're going to be writing a much longer paper, perhaps. The same is actually true for your primary texts. You don't want to use four different novels. You probably want to use, at best, two maybe even just one. Certainly with these term papers, one would be the standard, right? And when we have our, our primary literature, that, that kind of really comes into the paper during the analysis section. The analysis is going to probably usually begin with an introduction of the text or the author, uh, if it hasn't already happened. If you've already done that in your introduction, you don't really need to here, uh, but maybe if you've done one, you can do the other. You need to establish a little bit more context around the novel, connect it directly to the theory, because that's what they just read, and then you can have at it you can begin your analysis. The summary part shouldn't be too long. Don't don't use an entire chapter on the summary. Just give enough context for your reader to know what's going on, but don't overdo it. At most, we would suggest a paragraph. The shorter, the better. So let's talk about what actually goes into your analysis. Well, a big part of your analysis will probably be close readings. You look at the text and you look at the text in a lot of detail. 
With that comes the use of quotes. We expect you to use quotes to help your argument. Don't just tell us something is the case, prove it. And you prove this by using quotes from your primary literature. There are times too when your theoretical component is going to be brought into these quotations as you bring them into dialogue with your analysis. That's really going to be some of the most productive parts. You're going to be doing a lot of quoting here. You're going to be quoting some of your theory, probably, some of your primary literature, and definitely some secondary literature, which should be bringing in some points of view that might support or decry your position that you might have to defend or articulate around. One word of warning would be not to overuse quotes. It would actually be a real shame if, if over 40% of your material is quotes, then you didn't really write very much actually at all there, and that could be a bit of a problem. So what you want to do is either paraphrase the things that you're referring to when it comes to primary literature or secondary literature, or write your own thoughts. Don't only paraphrase. As I said before, quotes are important, but don't overdo it on the quotes either. We would also definitely recommend that you make use of passage quotes. Those are longer form quotes, usually four or five, maybe up to nine lines, somewhere in there. Passage quotes sometimes give us a lot more context and can be used to really express a close reading of a scene. We're going to be doing close readings the whole time, as Tina has said, but a passage quote can be a really effective way to make it clear to the reader by giving them the passage as well. Of course, you can't overquote with passages, and you've got to be careful there. But we'll also make a separate video where we talk about quoting and paraphrasing and style, especially style sheets, and you'll just have to look at that for more information on that. So I guess in conclusion, analysis is going to be a lot of dialogue where you're just proving your point. Your theory has explained really your method that you're employing, and your analysis is going to be taking that to task against the text, with the text, and coming up with a kind of result based on your argumentation. Usually your analysis will be split into different kinds of points that you're making, probably like three. It's pretty standard. And each of those points will support the broader argument of your thesis. I think that's probably all there is to say. I think so too. And obviously you can look at other academic texts to get an idea of how analysis works. That is the best thing to do, to imitate the masters, right? That's right. And with those wise words, we'll leave you for now. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.